I really hate to do this, especially since Lancer Tactical was so nice as to send me a gun to give away, but I was given the liberty to point out whatever gripes I have about any of their products, so today I'm going to answer a question I got when showing off this Keymod M4. Why would I want this if I could get the Cobra PDW for $5 more? Welcome to the review of the LT19 Gen 2 M4 Keymod Carbine or Carbine. One of the newest additions to the Lancer Tech line that can be had for $120 on Airsoft GI with the links provided down below in the description. In this review, I'll be going over all things you'll need to know about this Keymod Style M4 from the unboxing, internal stats, range, and quality, starting from the very beginning, the unboxing. So pulling open this rather average cardboard box, we get the paperwork on top. This consists of a rather well put together manual that shows the reader all the important details of the Gen 2 series guns. From a parts list, how to operate the controls, how to clean the barrel, how to partially break down the gun, how to troubleshoot minor problems, and you even get an exploded view, which I greatly appreciate. You also get two Lancer Tactical stickers and a cardstock target. Next up is a bag of 0.2 gram BBs that are safe to use with this gun, a wall charger that I wouldn't use myself because I simply don't trust any included dumb chargers, of course there's a tan metal high cap magazine, a PVC patch that will be attached around the trigger guard, a 9.6 volt nunchuck battery, and then the rifle itself with some silica gel packets underneath. And here we are, this is the Gen 2 Keymod Lancer Tactical M4. This should be to no one's surprise that this is a beginner gun that you would be looking at if you're on a budget. To cut down on the cost, the body is made from polymer, which also cuts down the weight at around 4 pounds. This does include all the rails, the Keymod handguard, and even the flip up sights however. But the outer barrel, trigger, trigger guard, controls, charging handle, rear sling point, and the buffer tube are made from metal. At the barrel's end would be 14mm counterclockwise threads under this plastic flash hider on a metal outer barrel, but moving back to the rail kit, we get the key mod setup that this model features. Like I said, the rails are made from polymer, so this might deter some, but you could always just add metal ones to the handguard if you have any. Or you could remove all the rail panels and move them around to whatever orientation that you'd like. Up top we get a pair of removable flip up sights, but these are not the best in my opinion. Yeah, it's a $120 gun, but out of the box these don't flip up very easily, and the rear sight features only one aperture. However, up top of the rear sight is a backup post sight, so at least you get some kind of an option. All the way back, this Lancer Tech comes with a 6 position crane stock that houses your battery. Just pinch off the butt plate and throw a nunchuck battery into the channels. This is a fairly easy setup, but one thing I don't want to be so easy is taking off the entire stock. Yeah, wouldn't it be annoying if you were in a game and you went to make an adjustment to the length of pull, but you found out that you went just a little bit too far. So the entire stock came off in your hand, right off the buffer tube. Granted the stock won't break away completely if you have a battery inside, but it will just dangle there from the wires and connections. Maybe just mine is like this, but this is how it should come off. Here, let me grab my M27. When you do your adjustments and go too far, the stock won't let you go any further back. But if you do want the stock to come off, for whatever reason, then you pull down this portion of the adjustment lever, then pull back. Like I said, maybe mine is the only one like this, but this is something I couldn't ignore. But hey, check out those middle sling points. Inside the receivers, Lancer Tactical did some adjustments from the older models by adding 18 to 1 ratio gears with 8mm bushings, and a piston with a full rack of all metal teeth, which should lengthen the life of the piston. An all new quick change spring system was added, as well as low resistance silver wiring and aluminum trigger contacts. And why not throw in a 6.03 type bore with a new rotary style hop up and a shaped bucking with a patch that reaches down into the barrel to give you an even better response on your hop up. All these upgrades really do help, and I especially like the hop up for what accuracy it can dish out. 150 foot shots should be no challenge with a 0.28 gram BB. So I'll give this gun credit where credit is due. The selector switch is also very well made. It clicks into place perfectly and shouldn't just slip out of place. But as I expose the hop up, you'll notice that my mock bowl is dinged up pretty badly. This is not something you should be so quick as to blame Lancer Tactical for, as I think this is just shipping damage, or it could just be the lemon factor that kind of rolls in whenever I do my reviews. Admit it, I'm kind of unlucky when it comes to the guns that I review. Under the bolt though, we see that rotary style hop up that is once again very well made and is easy to adjust. Then for the magazine release, I'd like to point out one thing. The included magazine will probably require you to remove it manually. But some mags like mag brand mags will drop freely, but give it some time the mag well just needs to wear down just enough for mags to drop freely. I didn't have any issues with the included magazine by the way. I wound it up once until it clicked and I got a full magazine to shoot out. So this is a good magazine. Now I have to bring up this point. Why would I recommend this gun when you can get a Cobra PTW for $5 more? 
The Cobra is only just about a pound or two heavier, but it's full metal, comes with superior sights, it's smaller, has about the same amount of range, it comes with a small suppressor, but you will need to use a peck box and some people don't like the wire stock. While on the other side, the Gen 2 comes with a better hop-up and better battery storage. I don't know, this is just something I thought I should mention. Especially since I would expect someone to comment about the Cobra down below in this video. But at least when it boils down to it, the Cobra is CQB legal right away while this gun can shoot a little bit over 350. What I want to know from you guys is if this gun is acceptable as a newbie gun in your opinion. I can see some fields buying this up as a rental option, and I know I was getting requests to review a Gen 2, so what do you think about it? Lancer Tactical has been so great to me, so I hate to really rag on one of their guns so much as I did here, but hopefully they respect my opinions. However, if you're looking for this gun for yourself, then be sure to check out the links down below in the description to Airsoft GI's website. I'll even link the Cobra and other Gen 2 M4s as well. And now with all that, I think I'm finished with this review. However, don't forget to comment your questions down below so I can answer them if you have any. But until our next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I'll be sure to see you all next time.